Beautiful. Is that? So welcome to SCORE today. We're going to be talking about AI. Um, if you haven't or not familiar with SCORE, we're part of the Small Business Administration, and SCORE is has over 11,000 volunteers around the United States that mentor businesses at no cost. Um, this call is sponsored by Green Bay, Fox Cities, Madison, and Southwest Wisconsin, which is a Milwaukee area. Um, if you go on score.org, you can go on the website. There's tons of webinars. There's tons of resources out there. <clears throat> if you put forward slash Green Bay, forward slash Fox Cities or Madison, um, you will get to that chapter website. Um, but you can also request a score on any of them pages. So we're going to unlock the power of AI, um, transforming your business for success. This is called Let's Talk Marketing. I'm your host with Robert Yankee with Top Hat Marketing and Score Green Bay. So let me introduce you to Lisa Zufal. Um, she's a creator of Rock Our you Rock are website. Rock Your Website. I agree. And CEO, <laughs> and CEO of Birch Solutions, where she combines over 20 years of tech, marketing, and sales experience to help businesses rock their online presence. She works with everyone from fledging startups to Fortune 500 companies bring the same energy and enthusiasm to every project and a few cups of coffee, let's be real. So I'm gonna introduce a little bit here, quick ChatGPT, just to show you what ChatGPT, this is the 1 million users and of all the platforms that are out there. You can see on here, Netflix, two and a half, uh, three and a half years, all the way down to uh, Facebook was 10 months. Uh, Instagram was two and a half months and ChatGPT broke that record in five days, getting to a million users. That was in November of 22. And then um, going to 100 million users, it took two months to, for ChatGPT. TikTok was nine months, Instagram 30, Pinterest 41, it's over 70 months. So it's got here really fast. So um, it's one of the up and coming. We're going to talk about some other AI programs. I'm going to let Lisa take over here. But uh, I'm going to stop the screen share and let her take over. Awesome. Well, thank you, Robert. So I, I'd like to start it off with what is your biggest question with chat GPT right now? Because, oh, was that a question? Or is that just background? Is That's people outside talking here. Oh, <laughs> that happens. It's okay. We'll be fine. All right, let's get into it. Let me do a screen two. You guys let me know when you can see my screen. I'm just going to prove that. Yes, I do all my, and you guys have noticed if you use Canva or any other platform these days that everybody's integrating AI into their software. So it really doesn't matter if it's um, if it's Canva because Canva is doing AI, if it's WordPress because they've got plenty of people who are developing themes now that have AI embedded in it um, to ClickFunnels now has AI. Gosh, all of them are incorporating AI in it. So even if you're not using ChatGPT, I think that's kind of the best place to start. Um, so you get an idea of how prompts work, how conversation AI works, that whole marketing piece. But yeah, it's just gone hog wild here uh, online in the last, gosh, I started doing presentations. So as soon as they launched, I think it took me a month. I signed up in December. And then by March, I did my first presentation on uh, ChatGPT to show everybody, like, this thing is, is going to be a game changer. It's the biggest thing since who knows what. Well, it's the biggest thing since Google Maps. And I like to do the comparison with map books. If any of you are old enough to remember these big, thick map books, right? The map books that we used to use to look up a, a destination to today, we just plug the uh, address in on our phone and then we uh, get to our destination a whole lot faster. That's kind of the way to think about ChatGPT or any kind of AI. It will help you get to your destination faster. There are a few things to know in between that, which is simply uh, it is a tool. So if you put the wrong address in your Google Maps, you're not going to get to your destination, right? And just like putting in the wrong prompt, in ChatGPT is not going to get you the right response or the response that you're looking for. So we'll look at that a little bit more today as well. So we're gonna, I'm gonna introduce ChatGPT4. Has anybody uh, anybody here upgraded to ChatGPT4? 
just give me a thumbs up or a yes, I have, or whatever. Let me know. If you're still on 3.5, we can do examples in 3.5, but I'm going to show you a little bit in 4.0 uh, just to level the playing field for everyone. Harnessing advanced tools. So we're going to get a little hands-on. Oh, good. Jennifer has 4.0. We're going to get a little hands-on with the tools so you guys can see how it works. I'm going to do a few prompts. Um, we can even do uh, audience participation, hot seats. So if there's something that you're like, oh, I'd really like to do X, we can plug that in and see how it goes. Uh, strategic business insights. So you get to learn about uh, your competitors. You get to do a SWOT analysis. You can come up with marketing strategies. It's really interesting and maximizing your investment. So, and what I mean by that is, you know, we were talking earlier before the call started, it just saves so much flipping time. Anybody who has a business now who's not using ChatGBT, you are spending way too much time spinning your wheels. When you could probably just plug some information into ChatGPT and have your stuff done in a matter of seconds versus hours or days or weeks. I know back in the day, we used to spend a whole week planning out blogs and social media content and blah, 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 right? Now I can do it in a day. So it's just maximizing. If you, if you do upgrade to the $20 a month, it just makes life so much easier. And I don't get anything from ChatGPT for telling you to upgrade. <laughs> 3.5 is still valid and solid. And if that's where you want to stay, that's, I mean, it'll work. It'll work. And there's so many more that are coming out that are trying to compete. Uh, the one thing that I'd know, and Robert, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is most of them are using ChatGPT as their back end. And they're just programming a layer on top of it, right? So a lot of people now are coming up with uh, creating bots through ChatGPT, right? And what I mean by that is different scenarios. So there's one guy that I follow on TikTok, and he is a social media marketer for he for major corporations. And he recently left there, decided to go out on his own. And now he's using ChatGPT to create these bots that help business owners get better at their ads, help them data mine. What, what's working now? What isn't working now? What kind of images should I be using? Grade my ads for me. Tell me which ones are what audience. So it's pretty incredible. The people with extensive knowledge in a certain field are now developing bots to help others get better at, you know, whatever they want. <clears throat> um, I did this comparative chart and yes, you guys will be sent the, the a copy of this because I realize it's really small. It's hard to fit all this information and in. I tried to narrow it down as much as possible. But this is just so you guys have an idea of ChatGPT, GPT-3, BERT, and T5. T5 is Google, BERT is Google. We've got two open AIs here. When they were released and then what's their modal type? Generative, descriptive, generative, generative and descriptive, primary use. So it gives you an understanding, but these are the top four that are being used right now for folks. And a lot of them, I think uh, T5 is more for development, if I'm not mistaken, multiple languages, colossal clean crawled corpus uh, training data, right? So this is what they're training on. GPT-4 just upgraded to, I think it's April, 2023 for their data set, right, for their learning. So they're not real time because I get asked this all the time. Is it real time data? Not necessarily. They, they're they up to 2023, April of 2023. The rest of these, I don't know where their, um, where their end date is for the most updated information. There are some that are real time. I think Google is real time. Uh, Gemini that they just came out with, they're now retooling. Have you guys heard about that Gemini fiasco? But um, they're going to be retooling that. That came out with a big bang because it's supposed to be real time, right? So, <clears throat> oh, it's missing the C. Sorry about that. So ChatGPT 4.0 is advanced language understanding. It expands the context window. It maintains longer, more complex conversations. So if you've been using 3.5, you'll notice that sometimes you have to reiterate your question or dive deeper and then remind them of the question that you asked earlier, if it's a conversation that you're you're scrolling through, right? So 4.0 keeps that memory a little bit longer. 
Um, updated knowledge base, here we go again. In the April 2023, which I think is phenomenal because we're a little bit closer to what we were even a few months ago to more current data. Uh, multimedia capabilities. So this is fun. So 4.0 is um, integrated with Dolly. So if you're doing uh, social media posts or you say, okay, give me 30 days of social media posts and then provide a prompt for those posts that I can use with Dolly, you can then have Dolly create those images for you. So you have your own images. The only thing that I would say is it really sucks with wording. So try to do images with Dolly with no wording whatsoever. <laughs> It'll come up with some great images as long as you're creative, but the wording is usually misspelled and just hieroglyphics. So try and keep it clean. You can always bring it into Canva and add the wording that you want. Um, enhanced customizations and applications. So it allows businesses to tailor the AI specific needs and use cases more effectively than it did before. And we can show you examples of that. <clears throat> Are there any questions? before I continue. I know I talk fast because we've got a lot of stuff to cover. And usually it's the questions or, hey, let's try this or let's do this that takes up the most time. So I wanna give you guys a pretty good overview of what ChatGPT has to offer. And then we'll go into the fun stuff, which is typing in some things. What do we think? Robert, you got any questions that you wanna throw at me? Beautiful. So strategic business insights, this is probably the most common thing I get asked. Um, how can I use it for my business? What, you know, for marketing, what does this, I have a marketing business. So of course this, this is the main question that I get. If you're in finance, you'll probably get financial questions and it's great to put this information in. The one thing that I will say, do not put any um, private information into ChatGPT or any other AI program. I don't care what they're promising you. I don't care if they say, I'll give you $10 million if you just upload your bank st statement so I can reconcile them for you. Don't do it. Just stay away from that. Just keep it nice and on the level of no personal information in there. That's all I'm going to say about that. Okay. Strategic business insights. So market analysis, competitive intelligence, marketing strategy, and development. Do you guys ever think, man, it would be nice if I could ask some super smart thing to help me pull these pieces together. Questions asked are very valuable though. As a suggestion, you could easily ask whoever is asking a question by saying someone is asking for every question, extremely useful to have for replay. Sure hope no one is uploading bank statements. Me too. But I thought I'd say that because back in the day, I had to tell everybody to stop um, sending their passwords through email. So if you're still sending passwords through email, stop, because if we don't do that anymore, there's more secure ways to do that as well. So just keep the personal information, your bank statements, any kind of critical information off of ChatGPT. All right, so market analysis, competitive intelligence, anybody struggling with these? And they're like, oh man, I, I, I could make my marketing so much better if I had some inside scoop. A couple people maybe. So market analysis prompts. Yes, I'm giving you guys prompts. There are three prompts that I've put together here. They're right below here. Everybody will get a copy of this presentation. So you'll have these prompts. You can copy and paste them into ChatGPT. But there's more to the story than just these prompts, right? This is just to get you started. Provide a comprehensive analysis of current trends in the, and the specific industry is your industry, right? So I would say provide a comprehensive analysis of current trends in the marketing, in the digital marketing industry. And then I would take out market right? Because it's just saying it twice. Including emerging technologies, consumer behavior changes, and market growth predictions for the next five years and see what it comes up with. Um, what I tell people is your answer will be only be as good as your question. So here's three that you guys can play with. But um, what I've been learning is it's not just this prompt, right? Provide a comprehensive analysis of current trends, blah, 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 blah market growth predictions for the next five years. The next question that I, I put a question in there, at if this, um, what do I say? Normally I say, let me know if there are any questions or holes in the prompt 
It's to make the prompt better. So let me know if there's any detail missing from the prompt that would help you with the, um, the results. And then the, the next part is, let me know if there are any question, any additional questions to help you finalize the results, right? So those two are pretty big because then you're asking ChatGPT to help you make the prompt better if there's any information missing. And then you're saying, okay, so if there's any additional questions that I should answer before you give me the results that would make it even better for me, let me know. And ChatGPT is pretty good about coming back with some additional questions or thoughts on how to make the prompt better. <clears throat> but yeah, so we have these three. Does anybody want to do one? I'll ask for a volunteer. Does anybody need help with any of these? So sample two is identify and analyze the top emerging markets for your specific product or service globally focused on, well, you could say globally or nationally or whatever, US market, uh, European market, whatever focusing on market size, potential customer demographics, and entry barriers, conduct a SWOT analysis, strengths, uh, weaknesses, opportunities, threats for the, and then your industry, considering recent technological advancements in global economic conditions. Do we have a question? I nobody's like this. Gonna, if, if nobody's gonna do that, why don't we take Katie, this from the Neville Public Museum. It's a, mu a museum in town here, she, so it's a nonprofit. Maybe we can help her out since she can't ask. What did Katie ask? I don't see a question from Katie. No, she, no she's, I'm saying, what if we use the nonprofit industry in, in, a, in a museum and see what we can find for her since nobody's volunteering? Okay. Um, well, which one? Which one would you like? Should we oh. do? Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. let's do number, let's try number one. See if for nonprofits, even we can. Let's go over to ChatGPT. You guys can still see my screen? Yep. Okay. And because I'm on four, this is the beauty of it. I can switch back and forth. So I'll do 3.5, right? So provide a comp comprehensive analysis of current trends in the specific and nonprofit. And what is the nonprofit? What it's is a the industry? It's a museum. Refine prompt as needed to complete this amendment. Also, ask any questions that would be helpful in um um. To provide a comprehensive, it's going so fast, <laughs> comprehensive analysis of the current trends in the nonprofit public museum industry, including emerging technologies, consumer behavior changes, and market growth predictions for the next five years, and it's important to consider various factors, such as digital transformation. Public museums are increasingly adopt, adopting digital technologies. Da -da -da -da. Uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, museums are also leveraging digital platforms for marketing, fundraising, and educational outreach. Personalized experience. Consumers today seek personalized experience and museums are responding by offering tailored blah, blah. Sustainability and environmental awareness. There is growing emphasis on sustainability and environmental conservation in the museum sector. Many museums are adopting eco-friendly practices in their operations. Community engagement and inclusivity. Public museums are increasingly focused on fostering community engagement and inclusivity. I mean, you guys can stop me at any time. Digital accessibility mm -hmm. with the shift toward digital experience. There's a heightened awareness of the importance. I think this is kind of spot on right now. Hybrid models, the COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated the adoption of hybrid models by museums, which combine, and I don't know, Katie, if you're doing hybrid, sounds like this is something that if you're not doing that, I would look into. Not, I don't think many museums are. 
Even as museums reopen their physical spaces, they continue to offer virtual programming to each to reach broader audiences and accommodate visitors. Partnerships and collaborations, museums increasingly collaborating with other institutions, both within, within and without, outside the cultural sector, financial sustainability, nonprofit museums are facing financial challenges due to reduced government funding, fluctuating attendance levels and economic uncertainties. To ensure their long-term sustainability, museums are diversifying their revenue streams through initiatives such as membership programs, corporate sponsorships, and philanthropic, philanthrop yep, donations. <laughs> In terms of market growth predictions for the next five years, so this is what we're getting to, right? <clears throat> While the museum industry may face short-term challenges due to economic uncertainties and public health concerns, it is expected to rebound and grow steadily in the long run. Factors driving this growth include continued interest in cultural and educational experiences. So these are your top five, right? So when you're looking at some of the challenges or some of the things that it's saying here, if these are the um, factors that will drive your growth, these are the things that you would focus on. Does this make sense? Well, so Overall, I, think, I, think, I think we gave um, Katie an assignment to do. Yeah, and Katie, <laughs> we can send this over to you, but did, did that help? Is Katie still with us? Yeah, I've never heard Mike and her um Mike and her stuff don't work. So yeah, feel free to use chat anytime, yeah. guys. And <clears throat> oh, you are welcome. Is there anything on here that you're like, oh, we should totally do that? Or yeah, that um I think I'm gonna put that in my report for the next time we have the meeting. Yeah, even Robin is like, yes, that helped. Because Robin, you're nonprofit as well, aren't you? Yes, we are. Um, kind of all of the above, furiously making notes. Okay, well, Katie, we'll send this to you so you'll have it. All right, so let's go back to the presentation. So see, you guys, you guys have this at your fingertips now. Ha ha ha! I love it. It's a great prop. <clears throat> it's a great prop, and that's where the spire starts. All of from. these are really, if you're just starting out, or if you're looking at kind of re. Um, looking at your business, like where do we fit right now for our SWAT? Because uh, we did one, you know, five years ago. Let's relook at it and redo a SWAT. This is a great one to kind of get your your footing again in this new world because it's completely changed in the last five years. So I would recommend everybody do a SWOT analysis just to kind of make sure that they're where they're supposed to be. I'll, I'll ask you a question on that because I did have a, let's say you put in a prompt and said, I want you to be the copywriter. I want you to be a marketing consultant, a grant writer. And you put in all the, all the different um, roles that you wanted to play and then asked it a question that, as being in all these roles, would that be a good one or a bad one? Or you shouldn't do it? No, once yes, once? absolutely. I said no, yes, but I meant <laughs> yes, because that's a Midwestern thing. So yes. Um, when you're doing copywriting or you want to do sales copy or you're doing, okay, I need help with my um, privacy policy for my website or you want, um, gosh, there's so many things, contracts. So a lot of times we do the, as a business attorney, can you draft up a uh, terms of use for my website? Right. So then it will draft it up. If you just say, well, you can write up a terms of use for my website, it will come back. It, it might have changed, but I haven't stopped doing it. Right. Because everyone is different. Just because you do one terms and you have a different website, you're going to have to do a different terms. Right. So anytime I do it, I say as a business lawyer, <clears throat> draft up terms of service, because if you don't, it will say, I can't do that. That's legal contact and attorney. <laughs> but if you say, as a business attorney, draft up terms, it will say, okay, as I will put on that hat and I will draft something up for you. Here's the thing. You cannot copy and just paste that. You must go through it and make sure that it makes sense. If you have an attorney that you can send it over to, just uh, take a look at it. That would be fantastic. And it will help you immensely. If there's a contract that you're putting together or a proposal that you're putting together as this uh, expert, what I usually tell people is if you're in doubt, put the expert that it would go with, right? Who, as a social media manager, can you create five prompts or five um, ads for this and then put your product in, right? 
this is what I'm selling it for. You have to give it context because otherwise it will come up with all kinds of different ads for you. Make sure there's context in there, right? Yeah, would you, would, Lisa, would you do one at a time or would like a, my, my um, question I meant to say was like, do you say I'm a, as a cop, as a team, as a team of copywriter, marketing consultant, and you list a bunch of different team members that you wanted to create me this? I would do one at a time. Okay. Because okay. if you get, <clears throat> it's like saying, put on your developer hat and put on your marketing hat. And if you've ever met a developer and a marketer, they don't think the same. So if you want ChatGPT to be both of those, and that could be just be a human thing. And my mind just can't wrap around that it can be a tech and a marketer at the same time. <laughs> okay. have you tried it have you tried multiple people? um that's what, well that's why i tried i tried it but it wasn't didn't come up very well that's why i wanted to ask that question yeah. i thought i had a great question you know to prompt yeah. it and then it was like uh, the answer didn't come up very good because i maybe I had too many too many roles basically for it to be at one time there be be as direct as possible and as much detail as possible in your prompt of what you want that end goal to be. And then you can just keep refining it or you can change your prompt, right? So this is the marketing. This is the copywriting guy. This is the, um, um, e even Blog. the email. So there's a difference between the social media marketer helping me with ads and doing my um, social media posts, right? To the ads manager, social media ads manager, right? They think very differently. On, on what to do. So you got to think about, well, who would be in that role to help me do this? Because AI can take on that role. You just have to tell it what role you want it to take on. Does that make sense? That makes, yep, got my question answered. All right, we've got more. <laughs> Competitive intelligence prompts. So here's more prompts for you guys. Anybody want to volunteer for this one? Speedy fingers always win. So type me and you'll be you'll be in line. All right. Sample one is analyze the business strategies of the top three competitors. Now, this one, you have to know who your competitors are, focusing on their product offerings, pricing strategies, and customer engagement methods. Now, what this, this will only go to 2023, so we don't know what they've been doing for the last 12, 12 months, because it's 2024. That's just crazy to me. Okay. So for the last year, you won't know, but up until 2023, I don't think they've changed that much, but you put in the specific industry and it will help you with that. Uh, sample two, identify any recent moves such as mergers, acquisitions, or partnerships by major players in the, and then put the industry that you want and predict how these might affect the market dynamics. Uh, usually it's your industry, right? Because you wanna know about your business. Sample three is generate a report on the marketing and advertising strategies used by leading companies in your industry, right? I have specific industry here, including digital, traditional, and innovative marketing tactics. So you don't have any volunteers? Wow. Usually there's somebody volunteers for their business. Connecting point. James, are you volunteering? Connecting point, total computer solutions. Which one do you want, James? One, two, or three? One. All right. And this is fun. I could do this all day. All right. Let's go to chat GPT. Oh, well, I'm going to do it all in one line. So, Robert, I'll just send you the this thread. How does all right. Sound? Sounds good. Analyze business strategies of the top three. Who are your top three cons uh, competitors? You can type them in. And your industry is computer solutions. Compu like co you're selling computers or you're servicing computers? Both. And three competitors. Connecting point is one competitor. Total computer solutions. Isn't that you? Yeah, his business is Cyberworks. And oh, I'm Cyberworks and Total Computing Solutions is a competitor. Uh, connecting point 
is another competitor. And then for a third, let's use PC mechanics. Analyze the business strategies of these. Let me change it to these top three competitors in <clears throat> my computer solution selling and fixing market. Total computer solutions, <clears throat> CyberWorks, that's me, connecting point, PC mechanics. And I'll put a period. So it knows. Focus, changing this. See, you're going to have to go through and um, edit it as it makes sense to you. Focus on your product offerings, price strategies, consumer engagement methods. Now, I'm going to say, uh, let me know if there is any uh, additional information needed to provide the analysis. Yep. Uh, also, put the, um, yeah, put the in a table format for, e for easy review. Sure, I can buy, provide analysis of the business strategies of the top three competitors in your computer solutions market total. CyberWorks, your company, Connecting Point, and PC Mechanics. Here's a table for your review. Ta-da! <laughs> so I, how would it be different in chat 4.0? <clears throat> Let's see. Is there more that you want to know? Nope, that, that's perfect. And I, I have both 4.0 and 3.5, so um, I use it. But I was just curious to see the answer to that question as well. Same question. Let's see what it comes up with. This is 4.0. Ooh, it's taking some more time. It's doing an end up study. Ooh, this is way more detailed already. This information was gathered from website related pages for comprehensive analysis, including the other competitors, additional searches and analysis. Okay, please continue. I should have said, please complete the analysis. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this fun? And look how that we've done this. What? How long would this take you normally, James? If you were to do this, uh, it would be, you know, uh, it would be days to get it correct, and hours just to even begin to understand each of those categories for any of my competitors. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The final two and put all in one table for easy review. While that's doing it, do you have any suggestions for better wording in your questions? Um. Well, what do you mean? I've noticed I asked the same question, but use different words and it, it can drastically change the results I get. So I'm always leery of 
am I using the best wording for my question? You can always ask. You can put in the prompt and say, is, is there a better way to ask this question? I mean, when I was first starting out with this thing, I would write a prompt, like write me 30 social media, as a social media manager, write me 30 social media posts, right? And it would come up with some pretty good stuff. And then I was like, but this, this is AI and this is conversational. So I went back and I said, is there anything else? And that's what I'm adding to these now, right? Is there anything else that you need from me to make this better? Because it needs to, and then I would give it more detail about my business right? And then I'd come up with better stuff. That's excellent advice. Thank you. You're welcome. Total computer. Yeah, we, we always think about that. Always think about asking a better question, get a better answer. So ask, ask them what are the best questions to ask. The quality yeah. of your answer will always be contingent on the quality of your prompt. <laughs> right. High level overview. No, I want a detailed for the love of Christmas. Oh. <laughs> Detailed analysis of all four companies in one table, please. Does it help when you say please, Lisa? I hope so. <laughs> A lot of people ask me that. They're like, you're so polite when you talk to Chat GPT. I'm like, I, I'm Minnesotan. That's what we do. <laughs> I don't know. I, my wife says she's nice to, to Alexa. So when robots take over the world, they'll be nice to her. Yeah. They can say, <laughs> oh, you know what? She said, please and thank you. She's all right. We're going to keep her around. <laughs> okay. So hopefully this, we'll come back to it. Sound good? Yep. Thank you. A little time, but I'll yell at it again if it needs to finish. But see how shorter it, it I think 4.0 sometimes gets super lazy. And I don't know why. As you see, it started off fairly robust. And now I'm asking it to put it in a table for all four of them. Lisa, now, my, Lisa, my question on this, would you would you have started in the same place or would you start at a new chat? Because this was totally too different from a nonprofit to for, for CyberWorks. Two different Normally, I would just start a new chat. But because yeah. I was going to okay. send it to you, I just kept it all in one yeah. Because it just makes it easy. Otherwise, you you guys will have like 15 chats to look at. Yeah. I just want to make sure everybody knew that too, that yeah. you start over if you have a different question with a different industry or different, start a different chat. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see this. Look at this. Yeah. All the different ones. And people are creating bots right now to help you organize your chat GPT. Because this is not organized. There's nothing organized about mine. I'm just trying to keep all my conversations in one line. But you can't really find anything in there. There are drawbacks. I mean, it's not perfect. But boy, has it saved me a lot of time. Was that helpful? Did everybody else find that? I found it very helpful. Good. A couple people commented. Let's present. Let's get back to presenting. So you guys will have these prompts to utilize as well. Did I read those to you? So you guys know, identify any recent moves. Yeah, I did. Generate yeah. a report on marketing and advertising strategies. Harnessing advancing tools. Number three, this one gets everybody excited because usually people are struggling just with what do I post? What does that look like? How do I come up with content? Anybody? Is anybody? Is anybody struggling with that? Just put a yes or say yes or whatever you want, whatever you need to do. So these three are develop a targeted digital marketing strategy for, you know, your product or service, including recommendations for social media platforms, content types, and advertising budgets. Number two is create a six-month content calendar for our inbound marketing efforts, focusing on blog topics, email newsletter themes, and lead generation strategies for your industry. Number three is suggest innovative ways to incorporate AI and machine learning into our marketing campaigns to enhance customer personalization and engagement. And the reason why I picked these three is not only are they hot topics, but they will help you catapult so much faster than anything else that I could give you. Oh, chat GPT. You want, do you want 4.0 or you want 3.5? 4.0. Okay. And 
Jennifer, your industry was finances, automating finances. What does that mean? Accounting. Small business accounting. Um, small business automation, accounting automation. Okay. Let me know what is there. I'm sure to finalize this um, request. And Jennifer, this is going to take a while if it's six months. So I'm going to just going to go down to a month. And then you can okay. if you do it. You can add the, the six months to it. Because that's going to be a lot, a lot of content. So here we go. <clears throat> Week one, blog topic, email, email newsletter theme. So the, your blog topic, introduction, introduction to accounting automation, why small businesses should embrace accounting automation. Your email newsletter theme for that week is introduction to the benefits of accounting automation and preview this month's content focus. Your lead generation strategy is offer a free webinar, sign up on the basics and benefits of accounting automation. Week two is tools and software. Week three is implement implementation strategies. And you got week four. So you've got four weeks here with blog topic, email newsletter, and lead generation strategy. So the other piece to this would be um, the follow-up that I would do would be um, as a uh, email marketer. Here we go with the roles, right? Please draft the, the four um, weeks of the newsletters outline in your response. So now I'll get the draft of the email newsletter so I don't have to write them by scratch, right? So it'll give me the subject and then it'll give me the copy. <laughs> Super awesome. And people are like, Lisa, are you lazy? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> no, you like to work smarter. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to free up it to do the work that I've actually meant to do, right? So here's week, so you get week one, embrace the future of accounting. You get week two, elevate your efficiency. It gives you the subject. It gives you the content. So I, now I'm going to go, okay, so it'll keep going, right? It'll, it's doing three, it's doing four. Come on, get snappy. Yeah, remember the first one that we did, it went so fast. It was probably like, Lisa, I missed you. And now it's like, oh my gosh, she's back. <laughs> she's asking me all these questions. <laughs> okay, now it wanted blog posts, right? As a blogger, uh, as a, as a, in, sir, blogger, right? I want it to be somebody who is, who has a big following. I want them to put on that hat. Like I have a big following. People follow me because I give them so much excellent information that my 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 blog is blowing up, right? Can't draft, right? Up the four blog posts that you, um, from your results. From your results with a call to action to the lead generator for, blah, 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 for that week. Now, here's one thing that I'm gonna tell you. I don't know about you, but I, I, I would probably recommend having a lead generator every week. I didn't even look at all the lead generators. Let's go up here. Introduce an exclusive membership program, unless you have these, do you have an, a membership program for personalized accounting automation advice. Do you have, nope. you can offer a free consultation though, right? Yes, absolutely can. Um, develop a comparison guide of top accounting automation tools as a downloadable content offer. Do you want to do that one? I don't know sure. what I would do. Really? Okay. Uh, offer a free webinar sign up on the basics and benefits. Are you in for this one? Sure. This is the the reason why I ask is because it's a lot of work to put together a lead generation, right? A lead magnet. So your lead magnet, unless it's just schedule a meeting with me, you have to create the PDF, 
right? And then you have to write the content for the um, landing page, and then you've got to hook it into your CRM, and then you have to have a nurture sequence and a follow-up. It's a lot of work to do for four weeks. So what I tell people is look at the lead generation strategy that it gives you, figure out what is uh, what you're capable of doing, because the last thing that I that I want is anybody to be like, oh my gosh, I have to create this and I have to create this and I have to create this one and I have to create this one. If it were me, what I would recommend is this is your lead gen for week one. Just schedule a call with me. Just schedule, you feel like you're, you're um, having a hard time because you can do that and you can hit the ground running, right? Because the one thing that stops momentum is when you stop momentum. Now that you've written all these, you've got your blog topics, you've got your email newsletter topics, right? Now they can just schedule. They can just schedule. <clears throat> awesome. Does that make sense? Totally. And then I would just take those topics and spread them out over months. Yeah, you can do that as well. Absolutely. So just month for month, that would definitely be more manageable. Yep. And so these blogs are really short. So what I would come back with, it, I would say um, blog posts need to be 300 to 500 words each. Do they need to be 300? Oh, with keywords. Dang it. Stop. Stop. With Blog posts need to be 300 to 500 words each with um, embedded keywords to help um, grow um, keywords. What am I thinking of? I'm thinking of embedded keywords for for high ranking on Google search and Google voice. Identify the best keywords for my industry. Identify the best current for my industry and incorporate them into this. Thank you. Okay, I think that's better. So what we're asking it is if you're gonna write the blog post, I want, can't continue with the task. <laughs> he gets so mad at me. I don't know if it's a year or she, but sometimes they do get a little upset with me. <clears throat> okay, so can't continue with the task. So I will say um, from, from the previous, see, it's a conversation, from the previous four blog post drafts written, I need additional keyword embedded, key, I need additional keywords embedded to uh, be found on Google search and Google Voice. Can you rewrite the first one? So I'll give it an easy one. The first one with 300 to 500 words. Let's see. I'm only asking for one. Identify keywords. Incorporate keyword naturally. Oh, it's giving me tips. Okay, take those tips and write the blog. So it does take a little time because you gotta, 
Hold on. I'm going to see what 3.5 does. I'm going to see. The blog post is this. Expert blogger. We'll just go blogger. Uh, right. A 300 word blog on this topic and include relevant keywords and a call to action to get <sighs> I, I schedule a 15 free let's see what so clearly 3.5 is is a little bit more friendly today so here's blog post. Schedule your free 15 minute. Streamline success. I did it in a new one, didn't I? I did. I did do it in a new one. But you see how much faster this one was? The other one was whining. So mm -hmm. it's not to say that 4.0 is sucks because it's actually really good in what it does. But uh, today, I would say that 3.5 kicked its butt. <laughs> What do you think of this, Jennifer? In the dynamic I think, world. I think you just like put a like a month and a half of work in like five, ten minutes and probably about six months of stoppage that I've been at like, oh I can't do that, I just don't have enough time. Look, like, it's been six months that I've been like, oh, but totally, this is awesome. Thank you. So um, something that people often forget is they just let chat GPT write whatever they want. <clears throat> and then they're like, oh, this is pretty good. This is very professional. This is, I, I, I could use this. What I like to do is put your personality in it. If you are normally a charismatic, funny person, you like the jokes, you like, sprinkle it with humor. If you're very serious and professional, you need it to be a, even more professional and it writes, tell it. Tell it what your tone is. Tell it what you want to convey because let your personality come through. So I just said, rewrite this with a splash of humor, counting with a kick. Why small businesses should get on with the automation bandwagon. Hey there, fellow small business hustlers. Let's talk about everyone's favorite topic, accounting. That's that's funny right there to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe not everyone's favorite. Not, not to Jennifer. Yeah, not to Jennifer, but all of us. <laughs> first things first, let's talk efficiency with automation. Those mind-numbing tasks like data entry and expense tracking become as easy as pie. Say goodbye to the days. So this has a little bit more personality in it. And let's not forget about collaboration with cloud-based platforms. Your team can access financial data anywhere. Now, I know what you're thinking, but isn't automation expensive? Sure, it might cost a pretty penny up front, but think of its investment in your sanity. So... You know, think about that when you're when you're uh, asking it to do blogs. But the other piece to this is it just wrote the draft for you, right? You're you're going to have to go through and make your final edits and make sure that everything is good. The biggest thing for me is the semicolons, and I'm not seeing semicolons. I'm seeing colons, but I'm not seeing any semicolons. And for a while there, oh my gosh, I could have just kicked Chat GPT. It was putting semicolons everywhere. Um, but yeah, make sure that you reread it and it is your tone of voice. It is on brand. It's got all the elements that you need. Um, but yeah, that's pretty fast. You can do all your blog posts. Do people see now why I only did one month instead of six months? <laughs> uh, it's been a while. Are there any how questions? About, that? How, how about this question? Um, would you, like you said, put a splash of humor in there. Would you put um, a person that you like, like yes. Chris Rock, or put a certain number. I know I do stuff and ask it to write, like Tony Robbins would write, or Warren Buffett would write. You can Good. name people that you are, in, you know, that are in business. Maybe Grant Cardone or some, you know, if they're sales scripts things, you prop it with a person's name to write it like them. Uh, um...
Okay. So the problem with this, I said, write it in the tone of Betty White. So it just plugs Betty White in there. Oh. So let me go over here. I'll go over to four. Oh, I'm learning. This one, that's 3.5. Yeah, I've had to write. I've had to write a letter like said. Write a letter like Tony Robbins would write it. I can hear Tony Robbins' tonality and his voice in that in the message. You know, basically the wording he says it sounds just like him. Um, let's see. So I can take this. Go back over to here because it's four point oh. Uh, read. Um, in the voice of, you want to do Tony Robbins? Sure. Rewriting the blog in the motivational voice of Tony Robbins, focusing on empowerment and action. And now I want to it, you to envision a scenario where you, I you got to do it with the voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Imagine transforming those tedious soul sucking tasks into a piece of cake. No more. Whatever. Da, 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 da. And here's the kicker. Automation is a shield that guards you. Concerned about the cost. Consider this. So why not step into your power and schedule a 15 minute consultation? That's cool. So yeah, see, you can write it in the tone that you like. Robin had to jump off. James had to jump off. Are there any questions around this? We'll go back to the presentation. If there's any questions, let me know. But isn't that fun? And yes, you guys will have this as part of your slide deck. So you guys can use it anytime that you want. Embracing AI in your business journey. We're, we're, we're coming to an end here, kids. So utilize chat 4.0. And if that is failing you, hop back to 3.5 because clearly some days that works a lot better. Um, hard, and you got, But you guys saw how fast it was. That's the whole point, to just see how fast it works. And then I'm not writing some crazy code. I'm just asking questions, right? Uh, harnessing advanced tools to drastically improve your operational efficiency. And we learned about strategic business insights that you will get using ChatGPT to maximize your investment to do things a lot faster than you did even a week ago. Even a week ago. So if you guys want to schedule a chat with me, I have a link here. Um, free strategy session. Oh, I didn't mean to move it. Let me hit grab the link. That link. Here it is. Here it is. Let me go back to presentation. Just go there. I don't know why I did that. So funny. If I go there, it's right here. And it's called Coffee Chat. And it's 15 minutes with yours truly. Absolutely free. You can go through... <clears throat> help you come up with your own personalized chats. If um, you're like, oh my gosh, I wonder what other <clears throat> prompts she might have up her sleeve. Well, I have a hundred marketing prompts that you can grab for free right here. And that is what I have for you guys today. Are there any other questions or anything else that you guys need? I'm gonna well. I'm gonna thank you, Lisa, for doing a call. I, I learned some. I learned some stuff today. I hope everybody else on the call did. I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna stop the recording, and then anybody can ask questions. Or thank you, Lisa. You bet.